What's up, everybody? I'm Katie, and this is For Your Misinformation, a podcast dedicated to making politics more accessible for everyday Americans. My goal is to empower people, especially women, to become more politically engaged so we can act in our own best interests. Let me identify the problem and tell you exactly how we can solve it. On Mondays, I break down topics like voter suppression, impeachment, and white supremacy, look to the experts in that field, and then talk about the ways we can help the most. That might be donating to a charitable organization, voting in a local election, going to a rally, following activists on social media, running for office, or whatever else we can think of. On Wednesdays, I highlight individual politicians, whether I support them, and who you might want to vote for instead. I spent this weekend in Philadelphia, where the Constitution was written, visiting my best friend. Uh, We did nothing but eat cheesesteaks and watch the Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix, and it was perfect. Have we all watched that yet, that Aaron Hernandez miniseries on Netflix? If not, I highly recommend it. But spoiler, uh, he murdered some people, and then he gets this sleazy lawyer to help him get away with some of the murders. Um, It is, like, way more complicated and way more interesting than that, so please go watch it. But I always love watching this stuff, Um, but I, like, never understand how the lawyers can sleep at night. (laughs) I promise I relate this back to politics. Um, But I never understand, like, how the lawyers can sleep at night. So in the Aaron Hernandez case... uh, his lawyer is the same guy who got Casey Anthony off for murdering her kid. Um, so like, cool. We all agree that bad people get away with stuff a lot, right? Like it's not ideal, but it definitely happens. So the Aaron Hernandez thing is like particularly nuts because you see all these really like credible witnesses come and talk about how consequences like never applied to Aaron that he has like this violent temper. You get to hear from a guy he literally shot in the face and then left for dead, but survived. And still the jury was like, eh, this dude seems like, I'm not sure if he, I don't know, maybe, maybe he didn't, maybe he murdered that person, but not these people. I don't know. So he seems like a real straight shooter, but he was, (laughs) I don't know. It just, the whole thing, go watch it. But The whole thing is nuts. Like, he's already serving life in prison, but he gets away with double homicide somehow. It is crazy, and I am probably going to watch it for a third time. But can you imagine if that trial did not have witnesses? Like, if the two lawyers just talked for a couple days and then they asked a jury to decide if Hernandez was guilty without hearing from witnesses or looking at evidence? Because That's what Mitch McConnell and our president's shady-ass lawyers are trying to do in the Senate right now. But we only need four senators to change their minds. We only need four Republican senators to have enough of a backbone to call for witnesses and evidence in the Senate. So I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm going to hope for the best and assume the worst. But we just need four people to vote for a fair trial with witnesses and evidence, which is what other impeachment trials have had. So who is it going to be? Who might have enough of a conscience to vote to call witnesses? Probably the most vulnerable to changing their mind are, or to voting with Democrats to call for a fair trial with witnesses is Maine's Susan Collins, Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, Utah's Mitt Romney, and Tennessee's Lamar Alexander. So all of them have admitted to being like open to the idea of calling witnesses. So it is up to us to make them feel the pressure that Americans want to hear witnesses. They want to have a fair trial. They want to know what's going on. So if you live in one of those states, like this is your time to shine, uh, they need to hear from you. If you don't, but you know somebody who lives there, reach out to them. But no matter what, it's important to let your senators know how you feel. Um, So write to your senators. You should not reach out to other senators. So if you don't live in Maine, Tennessee, Utah, or Alaska, don't reach out to those senators. Um, They don't care what you think. They care about what their constituents think, which is why you should reach out to somebody from their state who is their constituent who can actually, you know, like vote them in or out of office depending on like the kinds of decisions that they make. So... Yeah, it's important. They need to know that we want a fair trial with witnesses. So the thing that makes me so mad is that 
they're not trying to decide what the right thing to do is. They're trying to decide, like, the right thing to do is to call witnesses and hold a fair trial. Like, hands down, of course it is. Um, They're trying to decide if they'll get voted out of office based on whether they decide to call witnesses or not. So this episode comes out on Wednesday, the 29th. Um, There should be a vote in the Senate on Friday whether to call witnesses or not, meaning we have today and tomorrow to change four senators' minds. Um, I know we've talked about this before. My favorite way of contacting my representatives is texting RESIST to 50409. Um, That is especially important if you live in a swing state or one of your senators is on the fence about calling witnesses. But even if you don't, like I mentioned, it's good for your members of Congress to know how you feel, you know, like... This is supposed to be a representative democracy by and for the people, but if they don't know how we feel, if we don't participate, then there's no way for that to happen. And that sends the message that the status quo is fine and the status quo is not fine. The status quo is bananas. So let's talk about John Bolton. Uh, First of all, imagine if a walrus became a person and put on a pair of wire glasses Cool. Now you know what John Bolton looks like. So he was Trump's national security advisor before Trump fired him slash he resigned slash they probably argue about it still. Uh, But he also served in the George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush administrations. And he's like known for thinking war is cool and good. He would have been all about the Qasem Soleimani assassination. So anyway, as former national security advisor, he has all kinds of inside knowledge about what happened with what he refers to as the drug deal in Ukraine, which is just Trump calling for a fake uh, inquiry into Burisma so that he can manufacture dirt on the Bidens. So he said he would testify in the Senate hearing. So what are we waiting for? Especially because 75% of Americans think witnesses should be called, including half of all Republicans. Those are really high numbers, you know, like senators should be nervous about those numbers. Republican senators should be nervous seeing those numbers and voting against a fair trial, I think. But the other reason that they should call John Bolton is because he wrote all of this shit down in his new book. Of course, he's trying to monetize the fall of our democracy. So it comes out in March. So either we're going to hear about Trump's impeachable offenses now from John Bolton in his Senate testimony or we're going to read excerpts about it when it comes out in March. And I say excerpts because we are not buying that book. We are not giving John Bolton any of our money. Um, so I want you to listen to this really moving clip of Adam Schiff explaining why right matters. Colonel Vindman said, here right matters. Here right matters. Well, let me tell you something. If right doesn't matter, if right doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how good the Constitution is. It doesn't matter how brilliant the framers were. It doesn't matter how good or bad our advocacy in this trial is. Doesn't matter how well written the oath of impartiality is. If right doesn't matter, we're lost. If the truth doesn't matter, we're lost. The framers couldn't protect us from ourselves if right and truth don't matter. And you know that what he did was not right. You know, that's what they do in the old country that Colonel Vindman's father came from or the old country that my great-grandfather came from, or the old countries that your ancestors came from, or maybe you came from. But here, right is supposed to matter. It's what's made us the greatest nation on Earth. No constitution can protect us. Right doesn't matter anymore. And you know you can't trust this president do what's right for this country. You can trust he will do what's right for Donald Trump. He'll do it now. He's done it before. He'll do it for the next several months. He'll do it in the election if he's allowed to. 
This is why if you find him guilty, you must find that he should be removed. Because right matters. Because right matters. And the truth matters. Otherwise, we are lost. So what are we going to do about it? Well, if you live in Utah, Alaska, Maine, or Tennessee, it's your time to shine. Text RESIST to 50409 to contact your senators. I live in Chicago. Uh, both of my senators are Democrats, and they are both uh, in support of calling witnesses for the impeachment trial. Um, I'm going to thank them. I'm going to reach out to them and thank them for being in favor. Um, I am having a hard week. I'm just like tired and I'm traveling a lot. Um, so I'm doing probably like less this week than I would like to be doing, but that's just like the reality of life sometimes. So, um, I don't think I'm going to like, I don't know, there's no like special cause I have in mind that I'm going to donate to. Sometimes that just kind of, I don't know, that's how it goes, but I'm still going to do like what I can because I'm trying to incorporate more aspects of democracy into my life, which is what I hope we all start doing. Um, so what I can do from Illinois is I can text my friends, Emily and Annie, who both live in Tennessee, and see if they're willing to contact their Senator Lamar Alexander, if they haven't already, to pressure him to vote to call witnesses, because he's one of the four senators that might flip. Um, if you have a Republican senator, like, let them know anyway. Like I said, I'm going to reach out to my Democratic senators and thank them for their positions. Um, but it's always good to let your elected representatives know how you feel. So um, text RESIST to 50409 and let them know. If they think enough of their constituents care about this, this issue, they'll vote for it because they want to keep their jobs. So if we want this to be a government by and for the people like the framers intended back when they drafted the Constitution in Philadelphia back in 17-whatever, we have to participate. So I encourage everyone to contact their senators and let them know that you want a fair trial with witnesses. And then reach out to a friend if you know anyone in Maine, Utah, Alaska, or Tennessee and ask them to contact their senators because they're the ones that are most likely to vote for a fair trial with witnesses and evidence. Um, it's just a text. It only takes a couple of minutes. If you want an example, I have a lot of examples on my Instagram page at FYMIPod um, under the highlight about contacting your representative. I am always happy to help you draft a message to your representatives if you think if you're not comfortable with it. Um, it gets easier, I promise. So let's hope for the best, but expect the worst. And then try to get some rest so we can keep up the fight next week. By the time the next episode airs, we should know whether Republicans in Congress voted to have witnesses or not. And then we can move from there and figure out what our next steps are. So if you are just tuning into impeachment, it's about to get really, really interesting. Um, and let's make sure that our elected officials know how we feel so that they can bring our views to Washington uh, as the framers intended. Shout out to Hope Die for the podcast art, Kyle Dibdahl for the intro and outro music, and Ben Schlofelt for the audio production. I'd like to thank Lauren Duca, Sarah Kensier, Andrea Chalupa, Brene Brown, Lizzo, AOC, Nancy Pelosi, Karen Kilgariff, Georgia Hardstark, Marie Newman, and my mom for their inspiration, and I'd like to thank you for listening. <laughs>